Remember this effect that I showed in the Fusion Tracker video? Yeah, we're gonna revisit that today. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. That effect used a hidden transform node and effect in DaVinci Resolve. And I say node or effect because you can use it in the edit page or the Fusion page, and today we're gonna look at both. So let's get started. So here we are in the edit page, and I've got a short video with some subliminal advertising in it. And we're gonna alt drag to create a duplicate of this solid color generator. If you don't know about the solid color generator, it's in effects, generators, solid color. And then all I did was go into generator and change the color to something bright and contrasty to show that the background is being fully filled with our video. So anyway, that out of the way, we have our video. So to get started, we'll come up to effects. Toolbox, Open Effects, Filters, and you can either scroll down and find it or click on the magnifying glass, type in Transform, and then drag it onto your clip. Next thing we wanna do is hit this drop down. It should be grayed out, but if it's not, if you've clicked on it and it's white here, that means it's active. Now it's inactive, so we'll make it active again. We want Open Effects Overlay. We want that to be white, not gray, so that it's active, right? Clicking on our clip again, we come over here, open effects. So we know these two are tied together somehow. Well, what we're gonna do is the transform works via sliders, canvas, or pins. Now, if you choose sliders, which is the default, you have the normal transformation things that you might be used to from this tab, the video. Yeah, most of it's there, but we don't want the sliders and we don't want pins either. Pins allows you to select four places and then you can drag and make changes. It's okay, I'm not a huge fan, but we're gonna reset it and then come back and choose canvas. And this gives us a three square setup. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by enlarging our left side of it. And then we're gonna enlarge the right side a little bit. We're gonna give it a little bit of a tilt. We wanna kinda of add some 3D to this. So you just want a little bit of tilt, there we go. I think that's about right. And then we're gonna come over to animation, click on our arrow and drop it down, and canvas keyframes. We wanna click on the keyframe icon, creating a keyframe at the first frame of our clip. If we're over in the middle and we clicked on it, you can just come back to the start, click on keyframe to create a keyframe there, hit the right arrow, and then click the keyframe icon again to remove that. Anyway, this is getting way too long-winded, way too quickly, but we have our starting position for this. So we're gonna go almost to the end of the clip. If you go to the end, you can't see anything. But if we go almost to the end, what we wanna do is kind of move this around a little bit, right? So we're gonna drag over here and we're going to kind of drag in a little bit, like we're zooming in. And you could zoom in if you wanted to, but we're gonna do this like that and we're gonna move it to here. Yeah, that looks good. And then we can play that back. And you can see that it's moving around. And it's not the same as the intro, but it's close enough. Now we wanna add a little pizzazz. So we're gonna select transform and type in tilt. And it'll bring up tilt shift blur. We can click on that one. And you can see it added kind of a cinematic effect to it, right? Well, there's a hidden thing on this one. Again, with our open effects overlay selected, you can't see it because this is white. But over here in our center X, because tilt shift blur is now selected, we can drag this over to the left. You can see something start to move. There's a line there, okay, that's good. And then we wanna change our angle to about six and we can click on here. And if you can see it, you can select it. And we're gonna start by highlighting creator reality on our first frame again. And we're going to keyframe the center X, center Y and angle. And then we're gonna to come to about here where I start to click the subscribe button. We're gonna grab our star, bring it down, grab our angle, bring it over like so. And then when we play this back, yeah, look at that. Oh, we missed something though. What we need to do is come towards the end of the clip and we wanna move this over so that it keeps the subscribe button selected. And we can actually take our angle and bring our angle back down a little bit like that. So now you're thinking that's great, but it doesn't angle for the end of the clip. 
Aha, we're gonna fix that. Let's get back into Resolve. So now we're gonna go to the very end of our clip and we're going to click the keyframe icons for center X, center Y, and angle. We're gonna click the left arrow. This, notice this brings us over a few frames and we're going to unselect the two that have red keyframes. So they had active keyframes. Now, if I click the left arrow, it comes over to here, which is where we wanted it. And then when we click the right arrow, it comes all the way to the end. Now we need to do the same thing for the transform. So we're gonna click in the blank space next to tilt shift blur that collapses it and click on transform. Again, we have to open up animation, but you see we have the same issue here. We'll just click the keyframe icon to create a new keyframe. Click the left arrow, click the keyframe to unselect it. You see it moved. So now when I play this back full screen, we have a really neat subscribe animation. Isn't that cool? And that, my friend, is the subliminal advertising built into this tutorial. <laughs> I hope you found that part helpful. If you did, boop the like button and let me know if you've ever used this transform before, especially in this way. So now, without any further ado, let's go back to the Fusion Tracker effect and I'm gonna show you how I used it there. So now we're in the Fusion page for that effect and our transform is right here. You can see that I used the canvas and I use this because it's not easy and I'll control mouse wheel to zoom in. It's not easy to pin the corners here the way I needed to. And in fact, I had to use a couple of different trackers to move things around, but this media in one, and if I click the one key, it shows up here in our left viewer and it does have the rectangle mask on it. So that fed into the transform. This transform three is our super secret transform. If you wanna add one, we'll click in blank space, shift space bar to bring up the tool. And of course I was doing this earlier, but if you type in transform, you'll see that there's transform XF, transform and transform 3D. And even if you click on transform, it still defaults to transform XF. But then if you click it a second time and click add, now we have the transform like we saw on the edit page. So we will backspace to get rid of that and we'll click on our transform three again. And you can see that I pinned it to this frame on the trailer. Now, what's funny about this one is if you see in the fusion page here, we've got two white lines. These are keyframes for the animation on this. Again, you can see it over here. So I have it in this one spot and then about 10 frames later, 20 frames later, it's now flat, and if I control mouse wheel zoom out, you can see that it is moved. So in between these two keyframes, it's transferring between the trailer and my hand. Pretty neat, right? And also you can see the drop shadows adding in. So after this transform, it gets a drop shadow, and that too gets keyframed from nothing to about five frames later, it's a full drop shadow so that it shows that it's an object I'm pulling off the trailer just to help sell the effect. Hey, that's pretty handy, right? That's a lot of fun to use. Now you know how to use it. Now I hope you have a couple of ways you can use it in upcoming videos. So let me know in the comments below if you got anything out of this video, if you learned anything, or if you're gonna try this in your next video. And that's that. So look forward in the future to more tutorials based off of this Fusion Tracker skit thing that I did. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And until next time, there is the Fusion Tracker video if you missed it, and there's one YouTube thinks you'll like. So go check those out. I hope you enjoy them, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.